I'm going to say everything in just a minute, but you get you can get started.
Just watching, thank you for coming online and joining all of us mighty companions. And of course, in Europe was live Elizabeth, Barbie, CJ, Gonzalo, and all the mighty companions that are coming online today. We're going to do a section called The Function of the teacher of God, the function of the teacher of love. What is your function as a teacher of love? What is your function as a demonstrator of love? What is your function as a demonstrator of love? How do you deal with everybody around you if you if you are doing things in a different way? It's on page 19 in the teacher's manual. Function of the teacher of love. Page 19. I'm going to go through the paragraph, and then I'm going to go through the paragraph. I'm going to tell you what it, I'm going to say what it's saying, then I'm going to say it, and then I'm going to tell you what I say. <laughs> if a patient must change their mind in order to be healed, if a person must change their mind in order to be healed, what does the teacher of God do? What would be your role with your friends? What would be your role with your relatives if they have to change their mind in order to be healed? What do you do? What do you do with the people around you if they have to change their mind in order to be healed? What would be your role in it? Run away. Run away. Can you change the patient's mind for them? Can you change the person's mind for them? Certainly not. Certainly not. For those already willing to change their minds, you have no function. For those who are already willing to change their minds, you have no function except to rejoice with them. Just rejoice with them. So how many of you are already willing to change your mind? Yes. Okay, so that means that since we're surrounded by people who are willing to change their mind, we don't have any function but to rejoice with each other, to be happy with each other right now, to be glad that we have each other right now. So let's acknowledge each other again. We are going to rejoice with each other right now. I want to rejoice with you right now. Can I rejoice with you right now? Can we rejoice together? Yes, let's rejoice together. Can we rejoice together? Yes, let's rejoice together. Can we rejoice together? Yes, let's rejoice together. Let's let rejoice together. Let's rejoice together. Mm -hmm. Because if you decide to change your mind and the people around you have decided to change their mind, then they have become teachers of God with you. That's a teacher of love. God means love. God is love. Another term for God is love. So if you decided to change your mind, if you decided to try to see things another way, my job as your friend is to rejoice with you. 
my job is to. Y'all having a ball back there, Asia. I'm so glad. I'm so glad. I'm so glad. I'm so glad. That's all right. I love the joy. I love the joy. Because the happiness is healing. Happiness is healing. So if you decide to rejoice with everybody else in the room that has already changed their mind, you have become a teacher of love and a teacher of God, and we are teachers of love. We are teachers of God. And so the Course in Miracles then says, you have a more specific function, though. You have a more specific function for those who... That's great. I love technology. Especially when you are doing the Course in Miracles. You want to test anything that you have that has anything to do with technology. Just study the Course in Miracles. You watch your ego. See if it can interrupt. What you're trying to do. You have a more specific function for those who don't understand what healing is. You have a more specific function for those who don't know what healing is. If you are around other people who don't know that they have to change their mind in order to be healed, if you're around people who don't recognize that it's their thoughts, their feelings, their emotion, their consciousness that's creating their reality, if you're around people who don't know their spirits, not just bodies, if you're around people that think like people know them to think, what do you do with them? It says, these patients, the Course of Miracles called all of us patients. That's <laughs> why that you know that that's why I'm saying patients, because yes. we are all patients. And the Course of Miracles says that uh, you have a more specific function for those who don't understand what healing is. And healing is the undoing of fear. Healing is the undoing of conflict. Healing is the undoing of the idea that you are a victim of the world you see. Healing is knowing that you are love, and that's all that you really are. Healing is knowing that you're not the voice inside of your head. Healing is knowing that you aren't the voice inside your head. That voice that's talking to you all the time is not you. That voice that's talking to you all the time is not you. That schizophrenic, neurotic voice that's talking inside your head all the time and telling you what you need to watch out for and what might happen and constantly making you doubt and fear and wonder and feel like you're separate. That is not you. That part of you is just a voice you made up to tell you things that is turning around and telling you. So you're telling yourself to tell yourself the things you're telling yourself. You're telling yourself to tell yourself the things you're telling yourself. You're telling yourself to tell yourself the things you're telling yourself, and you're calling it thinking. And it's not thinking. It's image making. You're making up images in your mind, and then you're telling yourself the images that you're making up, and then reacting to the images as if they're there on their own. You acted like your thoughts are coming from somewhere else and somebody else other than you. So the course says that these are people who don't realize they've chosen sickness. These are the people that don't realize that they've chosen fear, that they've chosen pain. He says, on the contrary, these people believe that the sickness or the unhappiness or the pain has chosen them. So a person that's in, having a misperception believes that everything about the way that they're feeling and seeing things is being caused by something or someone outside of themselves. So they're always looking for who's going to speak or act differently or change in order for them to be happy. The average person is constantly thinking of things that need to change outside of themselves in order to be happy. The person with the sick mind is the person that's always trying to come up with what the thing is outside of themselves 
that's going to make them happy. The person with the sick mind is the person that's always coming up with new ideas of things they need to do outside themselves mm -hmm. in order to have peace. The person with the sick mind is the person that's telling themselves if someone else spoke or acted differently, if they were in a different situation or circumstance, then they would be happy. That's the sick mind. According to the Course in Miracles, that's why we have sick minds. That's why we are called patients. We are called patients because we think somebody else needs to change or be different in order for us to be happy. We think that we need to be in different situations and circumstances in order for us to be happy. The sick mind believes that everything outside itself needs to shift some kind of way in order for it to be happy. The sick mind believes that everything outside of itself needs to change in order for it to be happy. The sick mind believes that people need to speak or act differently, and if they did, then I would feel happy. That's the Course in Miracles definition of the sick mind. The sick mind is a mind that thinks it's separate. The sick mind is a mind that thinks it's guilty. A sick mind is a mind that stays angry all the time. A sick mind is a mind that's making up scripts for everybody around it that the people need to act out in order for them to be okay. A sick mind is a person that thinks they are just a body that was born that's going to live a little while, pay some credit cards, and die. <laughs> How many of you all have sick minds? Thank you very much. If you didn't raise your hand, I raised your hand for you. You just died. Okay, you in denial. Okay, that's okay. You innocent. Okay, you know. All right, so what do you do? What do you do? This, he says, these people don't realize that they've chosen sickness. On the contrary, these people believe that the sickness or unhappiness has chosen them, and they're not even open-minded about it. I know my daddy did it. I know my daddy did it. I know my mama did it. I know it was somebody else's fault, and I don't, don't even say it wasn't somebody else's fault. So what do you do? When you are around people who don't realize they've chosen the sickness, on the contrary, they believe that the sickness or unhappiness has chosen them. They're also not open-minded on this point. In other words, the body tells them what to do and they obey. I'm letting my body, my senses, my perceptions tell me what's happening and then I obey. Then these people don't have any idea how insane the idea is that there's outside circumstances and the body that's creating how they're feeling. So a person that's unaware of the truth is a person that's not aware that they have control over their feelings. As a matter of fact, if he said if they even understood, they have no idea how insane this concept is. What concept? That your body and outside circumstances are telling you how to feel and you obey. The court says they have no idea how insane this concept is, and even if and if they even suspected that it was insane to believe that you are a victim of everything you see, you would be healed. I'll say it again. If you even suspected that this was true, you would be happy. If you even suspected that this was true, you would be healed. Didn't say if, if you totally believed that you were the creator of your experience and not the victim of it, you'd be healed. It says that we even suspected it. That's how the cause of miracles said we are from it. That if I even suspected the truth, I would be happy. If I even suspected that there was a possibility that I'm not the victim of my experience, if I even suspected that my reality was being created by me, if, if I even suspected that the voice that's making me unhappy is the voice that I made up, to, that I'm getting to tell me to tell me was making me unhappy, I would be healed. So what it's doing for me is it's getting me out of denial first thing. This, this, paragraph, this one paragraph is getting me out of now. If I, if I even suspected that I was the creator of my spirit, the holy child of God, an unlimited spiritual being that was created in my reality, I would be healed and happy and abundant and prosperous in my perception. If I even suspected it, uh, yet they suspect nothing. So it's to them what? The separation is quite real. So to someone that doesn't know the truth, it really is real that you are separate from me, that you are different from me. It's real to me. It looks real to me that I'm over here and you're over there and you're separate from me and you all have your different ideas and beliefs and concepts that are different from mine and uh, I'm not really you and you aren't really me. Mm -hmm. uh, so according to A Course in Miracles, then a sick man is a man that thinks it's separate from everything it sees. Mm. Now, to those kind of folk, <laughs> 
He said, to them, love's teachers come. God's teachers come. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> it says, to them, God's teachers come. To represent what? You come to represent another choice. But yet, you know, I just realized, but if we are the ones who really don't realize that we are the creators of our experience and therefore not the victims of it, then we're the ones that are the patients. Yeah. And even though we said in the beginning of the class that we were willing to change our minds, so we just here to rejoice with each other, we also took the patients because we still get upset and angry, which means we still believe that something outside of ourselves is causing the way that we feel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that means we're actually the patient. So what that means to me is God's teachers of love are going to come to me. Yeah. That, 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 that help is going to come to me. That if I'm the one that's forgotten how powerful and how innocent and how loving I am, that means that the, the creator of the universe is going to send demonstrators of love to me, and you are going to have demonstrators of love that are going to be sent to you to represent another choice that you've forgotten. So they're going to be unlimited, highly evolved spiritual beings that are going to be sent to us to represent another choice to show what we've forgotten. So that means... That we can have very loving beings that are going to be sent to us that are so happy to show us that we have that choice too, but we've forgotten it. Mm -hmm. So don't beat them up. <laughs> There's a line in the Course of Miracles that, that God sent the angels down, down here to help us out, and then we ran them out. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, don't send me to earth. I ain't going to earth. They <laughs> pray hell on earth. I ain't going to earth. There's no accident as far as they you know they got the Hubble telescope that's looking out billions of light years in every direction and they don't see no sign of intelligent life nowhere near us. And that's what makes them intelligent life. <laughs> They don't want to be nowhere near earthlings. And that's why we don't see no signs of intelligent life. That's what makes them intelligent life. They can go unseen. They can go unseen. Because they tell the truth, you want to be like looking at what's going on, looking at the news about what's going on on Earth, and you live on another planet. But you come here? Okay, that's why it's good we sending signals out to outer space. We warning them, don't come here unless you're serious about serious learning about love. I've often said, flying saucers are not dropping, are not not abducting people; they're dropping them off. <laughs> <laughs> and then planet turn around and you've just been sent us to 20 years on earth no! <laughs> go to a place where people destroy the very environment that sustains them and think that they're different and don't feed each other don't take care of each other and think that they're different because they have different color skins and gender uh -huh. uh, go to this place where people think it's okay to love one person but you can't love everybody Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, come this is this is the party planet. <laughs> when we look when, when we listen objectively, you know, it's like the voice inside of your head, if it became a person and it was external to yourself, and you were listening to a person talk the way you talk to yourself all day long, would you hang out with them? No. <laughs> You would. You're not enough. Nobody really loves you. Nothing goes right for you. Y'all are making bad choices. What are you doing? You should be eating that. Yes, you should. What are you going to do tonight? I don't know. You don't know how to have fun. Nobody really wants to be with you anyway. You're kind of sad and depressed. I can't help me have anybody that wants to be. Maybe I can't have somebody that wants to be. I haven't had an orgasm in 30 years. <laughs> if that somebody was sitting outside and you talking like that, you would not give them your cell phone number. You know you wouldn't. <laughs> You need to evict your own mind, yes. yeah. your own yes. thoughts. Yes. You need to evict them, right? So to them, God teachers come to represent another choice which they've forgotten. Mm -hmm. The simple presence of a teacher of love is a reminder. Mm -hmm. Just your simple presence is a reminder. Your thoughts, your thoughts, your thoughts, your thoughts, ask for the right to question what the other person has accepted is true. Your thoughts ask for the right to question. Then say you're going to externally question what the other person believes is true. Say your thoughts ask for the right to question what the other person has accepted is true. As a messenger of love, 
you are the symbols of salvation. You're supposed to be the symbols of love. You're supposed to be the symbols of peace. You're supposed to be the symbols of right-mindedness. So you ask that person for forgiveness in their own name. What do you do? What do you do? What do you mean by that? What do you mean by that? You stand for the alternative. You're supposed to be the alternative. You're supposed to be the alternative. When you come into a situation, you're supposed to represent the alternative to fear, to pain, to separation, to unhappiness, and to guilt. You're supposed to represent the alternative to what you see in the world that doesn't represent love and freedom. It's, we're supposed to be the alternative. You can either be with a crazy man or you can be with the same one. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. those are the only two choices you got. Yeah. I can be with the same woman or I can be with the insane woman. I know that I didn't mention nothing about the characteristics of their body. I haven't met any women so far that didn't have the same body parts. I did once. <laughs> <laughs> out okay, I'm not surprised, Pam. <laughs> <laughs> if anything, you requested it. Okay, now... <laughs> but you all get what I mean. <laughs> All of us basically got the same body parts. They're just in different shapes, sizes, and colors. I want you to, I want you to be with that for a minute. <laughs> to make a real choice, you're not really making a real choice between body parts. <coughs> All women basically have the same body parts. All men basically have the same body parts. So it isn't about the body parts. What makes me different is my consciousness. What makes me different is the way I think. What makes me different is the way I approach things, the way I handle things, the way I see things. I'm much more interested in the mind of a woman now than her body. Yeah. That's the honest to God truth. Sometimes I just have to forgive myself how much I put through myself through to get the body. I did a cost analysis and it was ridiculous. <laughs> It's ridiculous what I put myself through in this life, Terry, to have sex. It's just stupid. Stupid, stupid, stupid. Don't make any sense whatsoever what I put myself through in this life, Terry. And don't look at me like I'm saying something strange. I'll do it all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Is that enough? What, what, really? I you what? You do that? <laughs> How many times have you said, I want them, they're hot? You know you have. Oh, yeah. They could have been Jack the Ripper. You didn't care. They <laughs> Let's get real. All right, y'all know me now. I'm gonna be straight up with you. I'm not one of these spiritual teachers that talk spiritual. Thank you. That's what makes me spiritual. I talk to adults like they're adults. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. Upsets many people with sexual guilt, money guilt, every kind of guilt. They don't like me, but I don't care. Because I want to have a healed mind, and I've got to say what I need to remember. And I've wasted too much time focusing in on people who don't take responsibility. People who don't take responsibility for themselves. Who wanted to use their, bargain as a, their bodies as a bargaining chip. I was asked to give up my life for sex. You can only have me. That's it. Mm -hmm. For the rest of your natural life. Right. And in return, I'm going to give you some dysfunctional love. <laughs> With a ton of hang-ups that I'm afraid to express myself. And I'm watching you. <laughs> and I'm supposed to go, yay! That's what I want! <laughs> because that's the way I was. And I wanted what I was. But I'm not that way anymore. What I want is sanity. What I want is love. What I want is evolution. What I want is evolvement. What I want is joy. What I want is oneness. What I want is awakening. What I want is to be with somebody that's not blaming me for what they're going through. Not attacking me because I'm not making their life be what they decide it should be. I want to be around somebody that takes responsibility for their experience. And it's not making their happiness dependent on me being different. There's nothing their body can offer me that's worth that now. Because mm -hmm. sane people have bodies too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so the same thing I would have wanted the insane body for the same body has those same parts. In all shapes and sizes. In all shapes and sizes. This was the way I like it. <laughs> all shapes and all sizes. <laughs> and same. 
There is no ideal female body to me. There's no certain body type. That it's the standard for beauty that everybody is supposed to look like in order to be beautiful. Because if you start to look through the eyes of love, everybody starts to look beautiful to you. That's true. So, so, so it isn't about how your body looks to me as much as it would have been in the past. I have some vestiges of that old attitude. I'm not going to pretend that it's not there, but I got sense enough to know that stupid Earl. Right. Because in the end, you're going to be with this person of mine. And when you say you're going to be in a relationship with somebody, you're saying you're willing to experience the effects of that person's thinking with them. Mm -hmm. That you're going to be there when they create whatever they create through the way that they think. you got to go through it with them. That's why you take their credit score. <laughs> when you get in a relationship that's why you're going to marry and you check their credit score because you don't want you to be impacted by their credit score because the once you join in a partnership with somebody you got to live through also what they think and how they act and how they feel mm. and you all been on this earth long enough to know that whatever the passion the sensuality, the sexuality was in the beginning, it always fades yeah. <laughs> it always fades. It always fades. You just, that was the cheese to get you to get the trap, get in the trap. <laughs> <laughs> so that the real learning can begin. So that you can get with the person that's going to push your buttons to teach you what it is you need to evolve beyond and what it is within you that needs to be changed. That's what the partner is going to do. They're going to push your buttons. That's what anybody in an intimate one-on-one -on -one relationship is going to do. They're going to make you aware of any hidden aspects of yourself that have not been healed yet. That's what's going to happen in any relationship you get into. I don't care how good it looks in the beginning. Mm -hmm. And you know that. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying anything that you don't know. You know that. But then what does the ego say? Oh, let me find the next one that's going to do it. Instead of me working on my mind, let me work on my body mm -hmm. so that I can attract somebody to me who might want me. But not for my body. But not for my body is what I say. Right. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, I act like I'm insulted. He just wants my body. <laughs> and then you get treated twice as weird if you don't. <laughs> I've gotten treated more weird by not wanting a woman's body than wanting it. <laughs> then anyway, what's wrong with me? I want to at least give you an opportunity to turn you down. <laughs> <laughs> at least I know I'm desirable. I don't, don't go too far now. <laughs> like I said, I'm looking for a total yes and a dress. Yeah, I'm looking for, you know, pants on paper like dress down. Okay, now, <laughs> sex and boxes. I told him yes, it's sex and boxes. <laughs> I should have known you said it, Cody. <laughs> yeah. My point is, what you want is somebody that's open and receptive to you. Somebody that recognizes you. Somebody that's saying yes to you. Somebody that's not resisting you and who you really are. And there are more people like that than you could ever get around to. There are more people who could appreciate you than you could ever, ever, ever meet. So, the court says, the simple presence of a teacher of God is a reminder. Your thoughts are asking for the right to question with another person is accepted as true. As a messenger of love, you are the symbol of happiness and salvation. You are asking the person for forgiveness for God's son in his own name. What does that mean? You stand for the alternative. You're going to walk up to your friends. You're going to walk up to your relatives. You're going to walk up to your partner with the, with the truth in your mind. That's God's word. In your mind, and you come in benediction, not to heal that person. You don't. You come to that person, not to heal that person. You come to that person, not to heal that person, but to do what? Remind that person of the remedy that God has already given them. I'm here to remind you of the love that your Creator has already given you. That's why I'm here. I'm here to remind you, and I'm looking forward to joining with other people who want to remember the love of God instead of the love of man. Yeah. Human love is the flaking stuff you could ever go after. Human love is based totally on conditions and bargains and agreements. It's given and it's taken away just as quickly. Yep. It's always around the body in some form or fashion. 
that is always around specialness in some form or fashion. Mm -hmm. So the Course of Miracles is saying, I want to be the reminder that you deserve love, and you deserve love regardless of what anybody else around you think or what anybody else around you is doing. You deserve love even if another person decides they're going to take that love away from you because you're not acting out their script the way that they want you to. You still deserve love. And when a person like that leaves, you ought to throw yourself a party. That should be the happiest moment in your life. If somebody that doesn't recognize your value decides to leave your life, don't you ever go running after a person like that. Mm. Oh. And you know you've done it and I have yeah. too. As a matter of fact, that was why you wanted them, because you were rejected. Mm -hmm. That's why you were attracted. They're validating what you think about yourself, which is that you don't deserve to be loved. Mm -hmm. And so you're attracted to them, and they're the ones who have to validate how much you love so then the Course of Miracles says, you come as a, with coming benediction, not to heal the sick, but to remind them of the remedy that God has already given them. It's not going to be your hands that heal. It's not going to be your voice that speaks the word of God. You're just going to give what's been given you. Very gently, you're going to call to your brothers and sisters and say, hey, y'all, why don't y'all turn away from death? Why don't y'all turn away from fear? Why don't you turn away from guilt? Why don't you turn away from lack? Why don't you turn away from loneliness? Why don't you turn away from unconsciousness? Why don't you turn away from anger? Why don't you turn away from dying? Why don't you turn away from the idea that you are something that does die? There's nobody. I was looking at some photos that I had taken many years ago, and I was and I was looking at it, and I was looking at the pictures of relatives that were no longer in the body, and it was a trip. My brother, my sister, my nephew, and my some uncles, and I was looking at all these people that were no longer in my physical reality. And uh, I didn't feel the pain of loss. I missed them, but I didn't feel the pain of loss. Because I don't believe they're dead. I'm not going to kill my relatives by seeing them as bodies that are rotting away in a grave that has a tombstone on it. I care too much about them to see them that way. That would be opposite to every single thing The Course in Miracles has ever taught me. You aren't that either. You're not this body sitting in a chair that's going to die one day. You're more than that. You're so grand. You're so glorious. You're so powerful. You're so beautiful. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. So the Course of Miracles says, what do you do then? You just give what's been given to you. What do you do then? Very gently you call to your brothers and sisters and say, turn away from death. Behold! You child of God, what life can offer you? Would you choose sickness and unhappiness in place of that? Hey, child of God, why don't you realize how much this day could offer you? How much joy you could have today? How much happiness you could have today? How much fun you could have today instead of worrying about whatever it is you're telling yourself to worry about? Because you're the one telling yourself to worry about what you're worried about. That thought isn't coming from anybody but you. I'll say it again. The voice inside your head is the voice that you're making up. That voice that you're making up is telling you what you're telling it to tell you. And then you're reacting the way you react to it. But you are the source of the voice. You're the source of the voice. If I'm saying Earl, you're no good, I was the one that told me to tell myself Earl is no good. That voice, that idea was generated by me, not by you. And not by anybody outside of me. Now, I will attract people to me that will validate that idea if I choose to believe it to convince me even more that it's true. So then I get the mistreating friend, the mistreating boss, the mistreating co-workers, the mistreating love. Or love. They're just coming from the ideas that I'm telling myself about myself to validate that it's true. What's going to freak you out if you continue to study the truth, what's going to freak you out if you continue to study the truth, is you're going to watch the external drama in your life drop away. You keep studying the truth, there won't be people in your life that you're in conflict with. You're going to find they're going to fade away. And you know what you're going to discover? You still are unhappy. You know why? Because it never was them anyway. It was always what you were telling yourself that was making you unhappy in the first place. And that is the most dramatic, the most incredible moment in your spiritual awakening. It's when you realize it's you you hate. And it's been you telling you all the stuff that's making you unhappy. And there is no person walking this earth that's going to make you happy. They don't exist. They don't exist. And it includes your dogs. <laughs> and your cats and your birds and your everything. Your plants. Your car. 
I know I went too far when I said you can't, but I'm sorry. You <laughs> <laughs> was, was with me until I said you can't. No. No, 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 no. Save yourself some time. Can you have happiness with your dog? Yes. Can you have happiness with your cat? Yes. Can you have happiness with your house? Yes. Can you have happiness with everything in your physical life? Yes. But that happiness is being self-generated out of your appreciation of the beauty of the life that God has given you. It's not coming from that thing. So just stop it. Stop it. There is nobody that's going to make you happy. There is no soulmate unless we're all your soulmates. There is no one little soulmate. Now, there are going to be some people that are assigned to you because in the body, you can't meet everybody. And since you can't meet everybody in the body, there are going to be certain relationships that are going to be held out to you to give you the opportunity to change your mind and to really experience joy. And you may be tempted to say, that's my soulmate. But they're going to change to the next person. <laughs> and then to the next one, if there's another one. Do you understand what I'm saying? That if you really, really want to be happy, if, if just a little bit in any of you that anything I said tonight today makes you walk out that door and begin to let go of if this were different, I'd be happy. If they were different, I'd be happy. Then I have done my job. Because you're going to find that out one day. Why don't you save yourself some time? And the weird part about it is the minute you recognize your happiness comes from you, your joy comes from you, your peace comes from you, then it's so weird because then the people start showing up that you used to go through all that trouble to try to make happen. As soon as you don't need it because you're fulfilled and you feel whole within yourself, there are more invitations and opportunities to connect than you can possibly take advantage of. That's the way it happens. And anybody that's doing that, recognizing their wholeness, they will validate everything I'm saying right now. I'm never lonely. It's, I'm never lonely. And I used to be. Because I love myself a lot more than I used to. I appreciate myself a lot more than I used to. I forgive myself a lot more than I used to. I'm not blaming and holding grievances against everybody the way that I used to. Amazing. Stuff I hustled so hard to make happen just show up now. Amazing. Amazing. So as something that struck me that was really interesting as you were talking about there's no one outside of me that can make me happy. As you as I was thinking back, I love the way my life is now. I've invited a lot of love in. But there was a time I really hated myself. And what good news I got from what you were saying is there's also no one on this planet that hates me as much as I hate myself. They're not that interested in you as much as you are. <laughs> Most people, especially who are eventually victims and asleep and don't have a connection with their source and their perception and their favorite grievances, they just think about themselves all day long. Most people are so self-absorbed because of their lack of love for themselves that all that concern you have about what other people think is really pretty egotistical and arrogant on your part to actually think that I'm spending all day concerned about what you might wear, who you might go out with, what kind of house you want. You all do, you don't think about me that way all day. So don't not give yourself what would make you happy because you're concerned about what somebody else may think. They're not thinking about you. The only person that may be thinking about you in this, uh, this fear-based, in a fear-based reality, is your special love relationship. And they're only thinking about you in terms of how well you're doing and pleasing them. <laughs> That's their primary concern, is are you doing what they assigned to you to make them happy? Don't you know that? That's right. Why are they upset with you? They're not upset with you for any other reason other than that you're not doing what they want you. You're not doing what they want you to do. Uh, isn't it? 99% of the time, that's exactly what they're upset with you about. Your behavior. Something that you're not doing that they want you to So that's not really caring about you either. <laughs> but why do I stay in a relationship like that? Mm -hmm. Because I don't love myself. Because I'm afraid. Because I don't think that I'm enough. I'm not aware of my wholeness. And I need you to validate me and make me feel like I'm valuable. And what's so deep about it is the minute you start thinking you're valuable, like you said, the teachers will come to represent another choice. Love will come to represent another choice. And so it's saying to us, I love this, 
It says, not once do the advanced teachers of love consider the forms of the sickness or upset the other person believes in. I don't care what you're upset about. I don't care what you're sick about. What do you mean? Well, if I focus on the form of your upset, if you think you're upset with your mother, father, sister, disease, whatever it is, then I forgot that everything that makes you unhappy has the same purpose. Mm -hmm. Everything that makes you unhappy has the same purpose. Everything that makes you unhappy has the same purpose. What does that mean? Well, it means that none of the things you're upset about are really different because everything that you're upset about has the same purpose, and that purpose is to make you believe that you're separate, that you're powerless, that you're not in control of what happens, and that you're not loved. That's right, go to sleep. <laughs> go to sleep. Go to sleep. Go to sleep. I understand. It's okay. Go to sleep. I don't care. Go to sleep. Go to sleep. One day is going to be such, you're going to get tired of suffering. And you'll wake up. And you'll stay awake. And you'll stay conscious. So that's okay. You're totally innocent. Because I'm still representing the other choice. I'm still seeing you as deserving more love than you even think you deserve to the point that you can even hear how to get out of the pain you're in. That's how much you want to be in pain. You don't even want to hear what will get you out of pain. Mm. Yes. Mm. Why? The course says, I'll tell you why. Because the person standing in front of you is not telling you who, out, who, who needs to change and who outside yourself needs to rescue you. Mm. And that's the only answer that an unconscious person is looking for. Mm. Yeah. Tell me how I'm going to win the lottery. Mm. Yeah. Tell, me what's gonna, tell me who's going to make the sacrifices that I ask people to make in order for uh, me to be happy. Tell me who that person is that's going to make the sacrifices and do the thing that I want them to do. In order to be. Now, I stay awake for that. But I can't stay awake when you're telling me my happiness comes from me. I can't stop. I can't, I can't not. Uh -uh. I've, been, I've done such a lousy job of making myself happy. The fact that you tell me it comes from me is the most depressing thought you could have ever seen. Because I've been so unsuccessful in making myself happy. Don't you dare tell me my happiness comes from me. You better tell me it's coming from somebody that's going to show up in my life. Mm -hmm. and it's miracle. Somebody's got that miracle for me. Then this book is saying they will. They will show up. They will show up to show you the alternative, but they're not going to play into the games that your ego plays, Earl. They're not going to let you put uh, guilt trips on them. They're not going to. They're not going to sacrifice their happiness for you. They're not going to look for you to make them happy. So you won't be able to manipulate them, control them, or anything. Love waits on welcome, not on time. And anybody that loves you. If you reject them, then they back off. Yep. Somebody that doesn't love you keeps trying to force themselves on you even though you're rejecting them. Mm -hmm. Watch out for the person that keeps on trying when you're saying, I don't want you. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> the person that loves is going to say, evidently I'm frightening you at some level, and I'm not what you want at some level. I wish you well, I bless you, and I'm going in the other direction. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's what the loving person is going to do because the loving person doesn't want to increase your fear. They want to know what's going to make you feel safe. And obviously being with me does not turn you on and make you feel safe. So I'm going to head in the other direction. Recognize misery and go the other way. Recognize misery and go the other way. Recognize misery and go the opposite way. How do you handle misery? Recognize it and go the other way. <laughs> Don't stop and analyze it. Don't stop and process it. Don't stop and try to convince the person. Go the other way. I'm a sane person. I'm a beautiful person. I'm a loving person as best as I possibly can. I want to focus on the truth. I want to be kind. I want to be given. I want to be compassionate. And you don't see anything about me that appeals to you? Why in the world would I want you? <laughs> you got the lousiest vision of anybody around. <laughs> but how do I end up with the person I hate? Because that represents you. <laughs> so you so you saw them because that's where you are the really loving person right next to them you never even recognized you never even saw them you, you see who represents what you value God so I wanted to go back about what you were saying please speak up I wanted to go back about what you were saying about us pushing each other's buttons and mm -hmm. it helps to bring up mm -hmm. um, you know what we need to work on so then in truth then I cannot hurt someone else um, bringing yeah. stuff up for them that they need to see 
They can, they, you, you, you can't hurt anybody. The, the, uh, it, now this is going to make you mad because the truth is different from what we already believe, so that's so what? Okay, this is going to make you mad. Alright, okay. Because if the way we already thought was true, we would be in a much happier world. So I don't mind saying things that people don't like. Because it's got to be different from what they already believe. Attack is physical. All attack is physical. All attack is physical. All attack is physical. All attack is physical. Chris, if I don't come up and physically attack you, then I can't even the illusion of hurt you. But can you hurt yourself from the way that you're interpreting what I'm saying? Yes. Can you hurt yourself from your interpretation of how I'm treating you? Yes. The truth is, I can't hurt your feelings, Chris. The truth is, you hurt your feelings based on how you interpret what I say or do. And that's in every situation. All situations. Your boss did not hurt your feelings by giving you a lousy evaluation. What hurt you was... Reaction. What hurt you was your evaluation. The cost of cross talking is really kind of terrible. The cost of talking is distracting me. Thank you. Um, yes, but I like to believe that somebody hurts my feelings. Does it look like somebody hurt my feelings? Does it feel like somebody hurt my feelings? Absolutely, 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 absolutely. But what's hurting my feelings is what I'm telling myself about what you're saying or doing. That's what's hurting my feelings. My father had a problem with alcoholism. And I had hate for him for a long time because of the things that that made him do to my mother. It took a lot of spiritual learning for me to recognize his pain. Mm -hmm. That he was in pain. That that was a reflection of his guilt. Mm -hmm. And that I had not walked a mile in his shoes. Mm -hmm. That it was what I was telling myself based on my idea of what a father should be that was making me upset with him. It was what I was telling myself that was hurting me. It took a lot of spiritual maturity for me to get to the fact that I realized he had a deep, deep call for love. And I have invisibly asked for his forgiveness for the way I treated him because of my unawareness. See, the thing about this spiritual path, you all are going to find out. Is that the deeper you get into it, the more you're going to realize that it's you that need forgiveness. Mm -hmm. Not to all the people you're trying to be on the spiritual path to forgive. Mm -hmm. You're going to realize you're the one that's going to be saying, would you forgive me for what I did in my ignorance? Would you forgive me for what I did in my unawareness? Would you forgive me for how I treated you when I was told it to my little selfish ego that wanted everything my way? Mm -hmm. That's what I have to do. I have to forgive myself for the way that I was when I was unconscious. More, much more than anybody else that I need to forgive them now. You begin to see how much love you were surrounded with. How many people in your life were loving you and treating you beautifully that you did not even appreciate. That you did not even see. And all of a sudden you go, oh my God, I had, they were loving me so much and I was so unaware that I did not appreciate anything that they were doing because I was so busy telling myself that they were different, I'd be happy. They were different, I'd be happy. They were different, I'd be happy. As if they were on this earth just to act out my script. It's like, whoa! And so what's cool is everybody that's still operating from that particular perspective of you having to change in order for them to be happy, they're going to leave you. I'm telling you that right now. They're going to leave. Because you are only in their life to please them. And the minute that you go, I'm going to honor myself, I'm going to follow my heart, I'm going to do the thing that's right for me, and they're still of that old mindset of everybody else needs to be happy for them to be happy, then they're going to leave you. Because it never was about you. Anyway. So don't freak out when it happens. Because they will be replaced. And they will be replaced by the coolest people that you could possibly ever even imagine beyond anything that you ever imagined. That's what's going to happen. You're going to have an in-between period where you're going, Oh my God, it looks like there's nobody before I got into this truth and it just looks like there's nothing going right and I'm not getting the love that it looked like it promised. And, you know, yeah, 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 you just... You are just letting the old 
after images of who you used to be when you didn't love yourself, you're letting it fade away. Mm. And there are going to be people that are going to show up in your life, that are going to represent the alternative to you. And then the Course in Miracles says, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Well, when you're in the presence of those people, you are going to seek for the truth inside of you. God's voice in this person who would so deceive themselves as to believe that they can suffer. You're going to be around that person and you're going to remind them in your mind that they didn't make themselves and you're still as God created you. You didn't make yourself. 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 You didn't create yourself. You didn't create yourself. You're still as God created you. You're still loved. You're still loved. You're still powerful. You're still not a victim. You're still an innocent. You're still guiltless. You're still beautiful. You remind the other person, you didn't create yourself. Okay? You're still the way love created you. You're still unbelievably fantastic. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. I'm glad one person wanted to do it. Thank you very much. Thank you. That's okay. That's okay. You know what I'm saying? Because you don't believe me. <coughs> As you would be like, God damn, that's right. Yeah. You don't believe me. <laughs> We're all going to be tempted to walk right out of this door after this class is over and come up with the next person that needs to be different yeah. and the next person that's supposed to make us happy and the thing that we're supposed to do today that's going to make us feel good about ourselves. We're going to walk right out of that door and still go, if this were different, I'd be happy because I am not enough. I am not enough. I am not enough. I am not enough for me. I am not enough for me. And I'm not enough for you. Wow, man. Wow. You still as God created you. And all your false ideas about yourself have no effect. Every idea you have about yourself, about you not being valuable, that you not being enough, right. it's not having any effect on who you really are. He said, the truth in my mind is going to reach out to the truth in your mind so that the illusions are not reinforced. What does that mean? There's a truth in me, and there's a truth in you, and the truth in me is going to connect in the truth in you so all your false ideas about yourself will not be reinforced. You want to be with people who won't join with you on your craft. You want to be around people who won't join with you in your anger, in your grievances, in your guilt. It doesn't mean you got to say anything. You just don't buy nothing that they're saying. Because it, the illusion can't be any stronger if you don't join in it. If I say I'm guilty and you say I'm innocent, you're not strengthening my guilt. But if I say I'm guilty and you say you're right, then you're strengthening my guilt. So I don't need to get in an external argument with you to not strengthen anything you believe around me. I just refuse to believe that you all are anything other than as God created you and that you are valuable and that you're significant and that you are loved. I'm sorry. That's what I'm going to believe about you. And then when I don't believe it about you, there's a part of me that does anyway. Mm -hmm. And that's what's so cool. Mm -hmm. So I, I was just thinking, I really do feel when I meet people, I'm like, I see your innocence and I see God in you and I see how pure you are, mm -hmm. but why do I still have the thought, why can't I transfer that to myself? <laughs> you will. You will. Don't worry about that. That transfer is going to happen. Because I'll tell you why, I'm totally confident that you're going to see it in yourself. Because you couldn't see it in me if it wasn't already there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. See, the mere fact that you could say, I saw the love and the God in you, I immediately told me that you see it in yourself. Because you literally see everything through your own consciousness. Mm -hmm. So you couldn't see the love in me unless you were looking out through the love in you. What you have to be able to watch out for <laughs> is those jokers who say, I'm so loving, but everybody else is crap. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now that's the reverse. That's the reverse. That's really what they think about themselves because they don't see anybody in the world to love. Anybody in the world is good. Anybody in the world is beautiful. They're just being special. I'm so, I'm so cool, but y'all really got issues. Okay. Now that's the person who really believes they have issues because they are looking out through their own subconscious mind and, and because if you, if you want to know what people are really like just listen to what they say about others that's all you have to do everybody you're with watch how they treat others watch how they talk about others watch how they talk about their past partners watch their outlook on life that is how they are. I don't care how kind and sweet and special they're treating you in the moment because in that moment they're just trying to catch you. That's right. They're just trying to catch you. So they're going to put their best foot forward just like anybody does when they go to a job interview. You don't go to the job interview looking like you just 
came from wrestling in an alley. <laughs> Even you, know, you, 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 you walk in there looking good, as you usually. So everybody puts on their front at the very beginning when they're trying to impress. You know that. But what's really going to reveal them to you is how they look at life and how they look at the people around them that they're dealing with in their experience. If you sit there talking to a man and all he's talking about is how big of a bitch his past wife was, a girlfriend was, what do you think he's going to say about you as soon as you don't act out his script? He's going to say something about you. But your specialist says, oh no, he wouldn't say that about me because I'm special. Mm -hmm. That's crap. He would. As soon as you don't act, as soon as he finds out you're not going to be the source of his happiness either, and he's not ready to take responsibility for his happiness, then he's going to start telling you all the things about you that need to be changed in order for him to be happy. And when you don't do it, then you're going to become another bee to, to, on his list of bees. That's right. Let's wake up, y'all. It's time for us to go beyond being little children and to grow up into spiritual maturity now. And to recognize you are God. God is in you. You are spirit. You have guidance. You have invisible guidance. The Holy Spirit is real. You didn't create yourself. You have an incredible spiritual guidance. That's with the universe is on your side. It's just waiting for you to go, you know what? I'd rather be happy than I'd rather be right. I'm going to stand for the alternative when I'm around my friends. So I'm going to tell everybody here that I have personal relationships with, I don't care what you're saying to me, inside my mind, I ain't buying it. Okay? I'm not buying it. You may see me sitting up there and looking at you with compassion and understanding. I ain't buying nothing you say about yourself that's saying you're anything less than love. And that there's anything less than love that you deserve. Sorry. I ain't going to do it. Now, 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 will I give you the opportunity to say it? Because sometimes, yeah, you just need to say the way you feel and get it out. You need to have what I call the pass through. You have to let it pass through you. You know, did you imagine how, how horrible you feel if you didn't have a bowel movement in a month? you get be dead. But that's the way it is when you hang on to old grievances and you hang on to old blockages and you hang on to stuff that's happened to you all your life. You have spiritual constipation. Yes. Yeah. Instead of X relax, you need some relax. <laughs> you need to relax. You need yes. to go within. You need to recognize yes. that you're not alone. 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 You're loved. You're loved. You're loved. You're loved. Would you acknowledge yourself, Holy Spirit? <laughs> Sorry, I'm going to keep telling you you're loved. Thank you. And that that's what you deserve. <laughs> Maybe I'm beginning to believe that about myself. Could that have anything to oh, do yeah. with it? Oh. Mm, mm. Yeah, 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 I'll say it again. Yeah, yeah. Don't worry about your soulmate. The Holy Spirit is going to send the perfect, perfect people into your life for you to recognize love with. Just you be awake enough to recognize them when they show up. Yeah. Right? And uh, thank you for sharing with me so much with my full-time teaching ministry. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for your financial expressions of appreciation. Let me, let me give you this. I really appreciate you all and those of you who share with me and those who don't. Both of you. Both of you. Uh, those of you online, if you'd like to make a financial expression of appreciation, just go to my website, earlpurdy.com. Yes, Earl eats and pays rent and all of the stuff that everybody else does. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, we are sustained by the love of God. We are sustained by the love of God. I'm also available for one-on-one -on -one sessions called Clarity Sessions uh, so that I can help you get past the blocks, especially the relationship stuff. You know, it's not as complicated as you think. If you can, it's like uh, Jack Nicholson said on that movie with Tom Cruise, it, can you handle the truth? You know what I'm saying? You, can you handle the truth? Can you handle the truth? You can get past whatever block you're going through if you're really willing for me to tell you the truth and not what you want to hear. If you're really ready to get past the block, I can bring over 30 years of working with people into our session, and you can get another way to deal with whatever it is you're dealing with. And those of you who are open-minded enough to also know that there is psychic awareness and intuitive awareness as well as reason and logic, mm -hmm. that there are two parts of you, 
then I will also share with you my over 40 years of working with uh, in astrology and numerology, which in its deepest level is every bit as spiritual as the Course in Miracles and everything else that we're studying. Because mm -hmm. all true spiritual teachings are about bringing to self-realization. Right. So there are a lot of ways you can get a lot of answers if you're open to it. So go to my website. It explains everything that I do, the services that I offer, including mentoring. Uh, because I don't know if you realize it, but things are reaching a critical mass in this world now. It is really more than getting a flat screen TV that's up right now. <laughs> I'm serious. And all that stuff is good. I enjoy all of those things. So don't get me wrong. I enjoy it. But it's also time for us to wake up mm -hmm. yes. and to be a part of the awakening. Yes. It, our, your life has got to be more than getting a boyfriend and a girlfriend right. and a job and a house and a car. Mm -hmm. At oh, some yeah. point on your spiritual path, it's got to be more than just yes. power, money, fame, and physical pleasure that your mm -hmm. life is about. Because it's okay to have those things, so why make it a big deal? Nobody's condemning you for wanting a house, car, relate. So just get it. Have it. <laughs> have it it's no big deal but you are here for a deeper purpose mm. you are the salvation of the world you are the healing of the world really you're so beautiful and you're so powerful mm. you too you are thank you thank you sunshine I appreciate it oh my goodness Oh my goodness. Those of you online, thank you so much for watching online. Um, I'm glad you interact with each other in, in case I get too carried away and I can't, don't really say too much to you. Just know you in my heart. Okay. And uh, I'm also doing a way of mastery at 7 o'clock Mountain Time. And that's a powerful teaching. And also a course of love on Thursday at 7 o'clock Mountain Time. That's online. But please come out. Keep, thank you for coming out. Thank you for coming out physically to the classes because when I first started doing the classes live, the, 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 the personal attendance at the class took a big hit. And so I wondered if that was a good decision on my part. Mm -hmm. And um, But I knew I, could, I had to keep on doing it because it was time for me to reach a worldwide audience live doing what I'm doing. So I've been living, teaching the Course in Miracles full time for 30, this will be my 30th anniversary of doing it full time this year. Thank you. Thank you. I'd be a nervous wreck if I was just depending on myself. This would be any fun if I was depending on my personality and people liking me in order for me to be taken care of. Because people come and go because they rightfully should. Yeah. And so if it wasn't if I wasn't seeing myself being sustained by God, I would just be afraid all the time. I'd be another person out here hustling, trying to see how many people could I get because it's up to me to take care of myself. I'm so glad that the Course in Miracles helped me get past my disbelief in God, mm -hmm. my unknowingness of God. Mm -hmm. Because I was one of these people that said I believed in God and it was just a bunch of words. How, I, how do I know it was just a bunch of words? Because I wear it all the time. Because I was afraid all the time. And so I couldn't fool myself. Because you can't say you really have complete trust in the infinite intelligence of the universe and that which created you, and you're worried about if you're going to have a lover, if you're going to have money, if you're going to have the job you want. And that's just a sign that that, that that realization and that connection to source hasn't been made truly yet. Doesn't mean you're bad, doesn't mean you're guilty, but please stop deceiving yourself about your faith in God so that you can finally get rid of the blocks to that awareness. Because you can't get past the block if you keep telling yourself you believe something that your fear obviously shows you don't. Your fear is actually showing you you don't. See, and that's what I needed. Now, fortunately, like any good parent, my son and daughter, whether they love themselves or not, I love them. Whether they love themselves or not, I will help them and support them any way that I can. That's the relationship of our creator to us. Your being provided for, your being taken care of, has nothing to do with how much you love yourself or how much you love your creator. 
Your creator doesn't have an ego that needs your constant praise to care about you. That's human love. And I understand that we do that because that's the way human love works. If I don't tell you a hundred times a day I love you, then you're going to stop loving me. So I think that's my relationship to God. It's like I go, I love you, God. 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 Because I, I think God loves like I do. So that if I'm not constantly saying, I love you, God. I praise you, God. I love you, God. I think I'm not going to be provided for. Because that's the kind of love I grew up in, human love. If there's a love so much greater and so much more powerful and so much more beautiful than human love that you owe it to yourself to let yourself receive it and to allow it. Not get it, just allow it. It wants to get to you. It can't wait. Love, real love can't wait to get to you. It's you that have to welcome it. God doesn't love the way we do. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God God doesn't love the way that we do. It's the land in the course of miracles where he says, I love you too much to leave how you're going to be taken care of up to your brothers and sisters. <laughs> and, I, and I'm paraphrasing, but I love that line. You, in other words, I love you too much to make you being taken care of depending on whether your brothers and sisters finally get to the point they'll look out for you. that take too long. Mm. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're going to love me no matter what. Oh, that's the kind I want. So that's the kind I'm trying to give. What I find is that it's not really valued that much at first. You know, you tell somebody they love you, and you tell somebody you love them, they say, you say that to everybody. And I say, yeah, that's why you can believe me. Don't believe the person that only says it to you. Because that's not love. So it's just the opposite of everything we've been taught. I love you, and I don't love nobody but you. Mm, I fear you. I don't fear anybody but you. That's what you're really saying to me. Because if you're the only one I love, and the only one that loves me, I am going to imprison your butt to try to make sure you serve me and nobody else all the time. Are you so insecure that a person can only love you? Yes, tell the truth. Just like I was saying about the God thing. Tell the truth. Yeah. Then you begin to get past it. And then you can take that one person that you think you love and you can say, I'm going to use you to represent everyone. I'm going to let my love for you represent my love for everyone. I'm going to start with you. So I'm going to be a constant reminder of your innocence. I'm going to be a constant reminder that you are truly loved. I'm going to be a constant reminder that you deserve love. Since I picked you out to be special to me, why don't I practice this on you the most and first of all? Which would take care of your need to feel like I love you while at the same time you're not feeling threatened by the other love that I express. Because love isn't sex. So my loving everybody else doesn't mean that I want to have sex with everybody else. Who wants to have sex with everybody? <laughs> like, really? Give me a break. Are you that insecure? <laughs> you know. I need to have sex with all you people. Men and women. All of y'all. Then I know I'm really important. No, I'd be dead. <laughs> so... No, I don't want to have sex with all of you. <laughs> and I'm certainly not going to use that as the measure of how much I love you and how much you love me. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous to think that sex is a symbol of love. It's, it's, it can be one of many. I can show you that I love you in many ways. So let's get over it. How about it? How about it? How about it? Can we do that? Can we do it differently? Can we do it differently? All right. Take a breath and take a minute. Then we're going to run for our lives. Okay. <laughs> take a deep breath. And tell somebody around you, I love you and I want to love you. I love you and I want to love you. I love you and I want to love you. I love you. I love you and I want to love you. And you deserve love. You truly deserve love. 
I love you, and you want to love me? I love you, and I want to love you. I love you, and I want to love you. Look around and say, I love you, and I want to love you. Say what? I love you, and I want to love you. Online, I love you. I love you and I want to love you. And here's the hard one. I love me and I want to love me. I love me and I want to love me. Say what? I love me and I want to love me. I love me and I want to love me. We love us and we want to love us. We love us and we want to love us. We love us and we want to love us. We love us and we want to love us right now. Give it up, Holy Spirit. I love you. I love you. We can do better than that for us. And I love us and I want to love us. Lord, have mercy. Well, mighty companions, may the course be with you. Hope's not available. Go out there and be the alternative. Now, also. Thank you, darling. Thank you.